Ever wonder where all those big, beautiful trout come from that are planted in Idaho's lakes and streams? In our next story, we take a tour of the state's oldest fish hatchery and learn the secrets of raising a healthy trout population. Over 400,000 people fished in Idaho last year. Perhaps all fishermen were not as fortunate as this first-time angler. But no matter what your personal success, the fact remains, countless rainbow trout end up in frying pans at campsites all around our state. Although Idaho boasts a healthy wild fish Ooh, population, water, water, water. many of our favorite fishing holes owe their success to the state's fish hatchery program. It's just a baby. I guess you could say, uh, number one, they survive once they're stocked. They stay close to where they were stocked, and they're vulnerable to fishing pressure. They end up in anglers' creels, yeah. and that's the way that we make happy anglers and happy campers. It sounds so very simple. But actually, it's a complex scientific process. Biologist Bob Esselman is the manager of the Hayspur Fish Hatchery. This hatchery has been producing fish for Idaho's anglers since 1907. But it's only been recently that studies have shown that Hayspur hatchery trout, for some unknown reason, seem to be the fish anglers catch the most, no matter where in the state they are stocked. The process begins here with the male and female broodstock. How would you like to find one of these big bruisers at the end of your line? This, this, is, a, this is a male rainbow trout. This is a female rainbow trout. The male can be told mainly because of the pointed jaw. He's developed a bit of a hook or a kipe, whereas the female has more rounded. She's also uh, round in the body, whereas the male is flattened at least on her. Her rounded body is an indication that she's full of eggs. A large female can produce up to 4,000 eggs in a single spawning. And unlike Idaho's anadromous fish, ocean-going steelhead and salmon, which die after spawning, these rainbow trout can be stripped of their eggs or sperm as many as four or five seasons in their lifespan. The fish are calmed by an anesthetic added to the water. Those males that are ripe are stroked down their body cavity and stripped of their sperm. The process for the females is a bit more sophisticated. The air spawning just puts a little bit of positive pressure in the abdomen. The eggs have to go out the vent. Almost instantly, over 90% of the eggs are fertilized by the sperm. From here, they're transported to the incubator house where biologists measure the eggs to estimate the number in the bucket. When this is completed, they're poured into a tray and stored in the incubator for approximately a month and a half. A constant flow of running water supplies oxygen to the eggs and carries away their waste products. After about 17 days, they'll look like this. What you're seeing there is the little darkened pigments from the eyes of the developing embryo inside or right through the translucent eggshell. Two weeks later, they've become mobile supporting a tiny tail and a head that seems to be all eyes. You know, they're called sack fry and they just will lay around kind of lethargic like that and they'll slowly consume that yolk sac over about the next two and a half weeks. They'll probably double their length during that time. These tiny fish will be raised to a catchable size. That's about 10 to 14 inches right here at Hayspur Hatchery and then released into a nearby fishing hole. We ship eyed eggs to 10 different fish and game hatcheries within the state of Idaho. These eggs right here are going to head to the Hagerman fish hatchery. All we do in an egg shipping container is to maintain a cool but damp environment for those eyed eggs and they'll transport that way and they'll be good to go for at least 48 hours. That's it. Ready to boogie.